Hey now, it's Sharon. I'm back to share another idea on how to reform the police. If you're new to the channel, I'm a retired detective. I worked for 20 years for a southeastern city in the U.S. and I was also in the military. I'm sharing my ideas, my experiences, along with my perspectives on the experiences that I had while policing. And um, with that being said, I wanted to give you a different perspective. I've shared perspectives on the individual as an officer coming into policing or already has an established career. I've shared the perspective on the organizational values and, and uh, policies and practices within the organization. I shared ideas on that, but I wanted to take a little, a little twist, if you will, um, as a detective, I remember watching all the little shows and stuff like that. And then becoming a detective, I was like, okay, good. I can utilize this saying here, you know, think like the perp or think like the criminal. And that's good to a certain degree. Um, it's helped a little bit. That's a whole different video. But what I wanted to do is give you a different perspective in terms of whose lens are we using when we uh, look at certain things. And so here's the situation. Zero tolerance policing. We've all heard of it. I've participated in it. I was very instrumental in it. And as I started to take a step back and look at some of the things we were doing as a department, I realized that we were sterilizing the community and causing some of the blight. And I've talked about that in other uh, videos about productivity and quota and things like that. But here's, here's the, here's the situation. Zero tolerance policing. I remember we would do roadblocks or they're called traffic safety uh, stops now. I'm not sure what they're called, but roadblocks. And say we do it for an hour. We get a couple of tickets, a couple of arrests, a couple of impounds, and then we move on. As police officers, we clear the area. We're on to the next thing. But we never think about what happens to the area after we clear it? Hold that thought. Another uh, zero tolerance, tolerance practice was, uh, oh, oh, I know, I know, okay. Supervisors, I talked about that uh, two videos ago, how some supervisors were inexperienced. We had a supervisor that never worked plain clothes or UC, but he was our supervisor in a, UC unit, plain clothes unit. That always mesmerized me, but I shared in the video, two videos ago, how we have these leaders or supervisors in leadership positions with no experience trying to lead us in a direction. And so if the supervisor has never worked UC or plain clothes, how could he or she direct a unit of veteran officers in that direction, what's the goal? And what I saw was, if the, if the supervisor didn't have experience, the supervisor, 90% of the time, is gonna lead on, lean on the veteran officer to help guide. And what I saw, veteran officers would take advantage. Um, some of the veteran officers were corner cutters. They cut corners so much that um, you wonder how they're still policing. And these were the people that the supervisors depended on. You see what I'm getting at? Now back to the first scenario about the traffic stops. After officers clear the area, we're out. We are gone. We're probably in the cut, as they say, going to get something to eat. We did our job. Uh, after we finish eating, we come back out and go run and gun some more. But the area... What happens to the area after we clear out? And the solution to both of these scenarios that I just talked about is talking to the community. A lot of times, if you don't get out and talk to the community, you'll never know what happens after the roadblock. So I started to talk to people in the community. I started to build trust, talk to them, realizing we all want the same things. We want to feel safe. We want to be able to go to work make the money, pay bills, you know, go on vacation. Uh, I talked to people and they started telling me, look, when y'all clear out, the real drug dealers come out. The real dope dealers move their dope. The real uh, money makers 
got car loads and truck loads of money pushing it through. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, you guys think you, you, you hit a lick because you got two toes, two impounds and uh, a couple of grams of uh, girl or boy, as they used to call it. Y'all ain't hitting on nothing because after y'all move out, they know it's clear and they coming through. And I'm like, wow. But that was from talking to the community, talking to the community. Now, the second scenario with the, the supervisors, <laughs> I found that a lot of supervisors that didn't have the experience, I don't know what the word is. Maybe is it proud? They didn't want to take advice. Maybe because I'm female, maybe because I'm brown, I don't know. But they didn't want to take advice from me. So I'll leave it at that. I'll give I'll let you stew on that a little bit. But think about those two scenarios and the perspective. I just I just twisted a little bit. Um, but yeah, we need to think way outside the box and get to talking to folks and build some trust. But that's it. I, that's all I want to share with you. Take a look at our um, online store. The link is in the description. I created some notebooks. And always remember, always remember, you don't necessarily have to go through a thing to learn from it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.